Hi, my name is Jessica Spinucci, student number 211366247. Entering fourth year, I'm excited to finish. This assessment task has made me reflect on my past four years of university and my time in schools. Which brings me to my philosophy. I have read the description of McGraw-Hill Higher Education, which states, behind every school and every teacher is a set of related beliefs. A philosophy of education that influences what and how students are taught. A philosophy of education represents answers to questions about the purpose of schooling, a teacher's role, and what should be taught and by what methods. With this in mind, I think of what beliefs and values I hold. As an educator, I ultimately aim to be friendly, passionate and caring, with a dedication to having a positive impact on students' lives through education. I believe my philosophy is aligned with that of the seven um, Australian professional standards for teachers, which I'll be discussing further in this presentation. A teacher has many roles as they decide what is taught and how. My philosophy to this is alike Dewey's philosophy on education. Published in Experienced Published in Experience in Education nineteen thirty eight, he sides with neither traditional nor progressive education, but with the understanding of how humans have the experiences they do and how this understanding is necessary when designing effective education. An example of this would be an authentic learning experience, which is something I would like to provide. An authentic task is purposeful and engaging. It models how people solve real problems in work and or communities. It can also demonstrate what students know and can do. An example of, of an authentic learning task is presented by Miss Park, a grade 6 teacher from the US. Her entertaining and infectious joy of teaching provides us with an insight into how to create a rich learning environment for our students. You can find this on YouTube, and many of you may have already seen it if you're undertaking ESM 410, as she provides the students with an engaging maths problem, which puts them into the experience and puts them as active participants. Uh, as just mentioned, an authentic learning task can demonstrate what students know and can do. This leads me to the thought of what students bring with them to the classroom. Many of you may be familiar with the term virtual backpack or school bag, as coined by Pat Thompson, which I'm sure most of you will recall, it is the idea that students bring with them skills and experiences from home life and believe it is important to consider as a teacher as it can impact on what you are teaching. Finally, thinking about the purpose of schooling, at the beginning of school placement this year, I asked my students, why do we go to school? And they taught me something. As they answered with, we go to school to learn, I further questioned why to each of their answers. And so they answer next, to get a job. Why do we get a job? To get money. Why do we need money? For food. And it goes on for a while, but the end result is to be happy. Of course, this made me happy and also gave me a purpose. Also, these questions were easy to answer for the students. I could see them realise why they were here at school and why it was important. Finally, as part of my philosophy, I have attended seven, several professional development development sessions throughout this year as I'm eager to learn as much as possible about all aspects of primary education and believe it's vital that teachers continue to learn and develop. Next, to the undefinable term of pedagogy. And so, from what I understand, your pedagogical position is what you see when you look into the classroom. It is the role taken by the teacher and the image projected and the type of social behaviour performed by the teacher. It is the culture of the classroom. This degree has not only taught me the theoretical aspects of education, but has highlighted to me the importance of always being enthusiastic and dedicated in the classroom. Throughout my placements, I have endeavoured to exhibit these qualities, and so when you look into my classroom, I hope you see a teacher who knows the students she has and provides for them and their abilities through engaging in educational lessons. I also um, I am also enthusiastic about the, mod, um, the use of modern technology as I place much importance of its integration into all curriculum areas. University and my teaching experience have helped me to further develop my skills and I feel I'm fully trained at allowing my students the opportunity to use a variety of technologies within the classroom. This also includes manipulatives. To be honest, whilst my philosophy can be compared to that of theorists such as Dewey, much of my pedagogical position is formed by the teachers I have had as a student. I think of the teachers that I enjoyed. 
I think of the lessons I remember. I think of the teachers who cared. I think of the classroom I felt comfortable and confident in. And that is what I aim to do and be as a teacher for my students. I feel it's hard to explain exactly my pedagogy, but hopefully you can uh, better get, get a better idea through the examples I'm about to share. So looking at the 7 8 all um, Australian Professional Standard standards for teachers, which I will refer to as AITSL, uh, there are three headings, professional knowledge, professional practice and professional engagement. First, professional knowledge, standard one, know your students and how they learn. Important and rightly so the first standard. My current placement has allowed me to develop solid classroom management skills and the ability to form warm and respectful relationships with students. And so knowing students and how they learn is important to me. Which brings me to the substandard 1.5, differentiate teaching to meet the specific learning needs of students across a full range of abilities. Okay, so with my class, we have a great range of abilities. These abilities can change in uh, different areas. For example, we have some students who are great at maths, but not so great at literacy. And so to recognize this and address this is important. A strategy used in mathematics to differentiate teaching is to extend and enable tasks. Again, this strategy may be familiar with students of ESM 410. A great YouTube clip titled Tips and Strategies for Effective Differentiating and Instruction gives examples of this. In my, in my grade 1 class, I have students that are classified as above, below and at level in mathematics. This is in regards to OSVAL's levels and corresponded to their grade level. So for example, those students at level are working towards level 1 OSVALs. Those students above level could be at level 2 OSVALs or higher. Again, this um, there is a range of abilities. When teaching addition and subtraction to my class, I extend and enable questions. For example, it could be as simple as using bigger numbers and smaller numbers. As I extend questions for students that are working above level by giving them bigger numbers to work with. This is effectively accommodating for those students. Further to this, uh, grouping students of similar abilities is also effective. As a teacher, you can differentiate what and how you are teaching depending on the group. Bringing me to my second Aitzel standard, and this time looking at professional practice. Standard four, which is create and maintain supportive and safe learning environments. When thinking of this standard, I first think of the rules we set in the classroom. Almost always at the start of the year, the, uh, we sit in our class and create a set of rules. I believe the best way to do this is collaboratively. With the kids involved, that puts the ownership on them. They create the rules and they live by them. A great idea I have seen um, is to make this into a contract all students have to sign. This makes them formal and brings a sense of community to the classroom as everyone participates. Bringing me to substandard 4.3. Managing challenging behaviour. I reflected on my time at my placement in 2013. This is an actual reflection of their behaviour management program. I've used pseudonyms in order to protect their identity. So, Oakdale Primary School has many systems and programs in place of manage, uh, to manage behaviour. First, by rewarding good positive behaviour with week, weekly rewards given, to, um, given during assembly to the students behaving correctly, conducting themselves well, working in a good manner, and being a kind and caring friend. In the classroom, positive behaviour is embraced by rewarding students with such things as stickers, special pens, or crayons. By doing this, this reduces the likelihood of bad behaviour also. In the case of bad behaviour, the student may be moved away from the class to an area where they can reflect on their behaviour and continue to do their work. If the behaviour persists, further actions taken by notifying the parents. Two years on, and I still believe this is an effective approach, as it, as it speaks of rewarding positive behaviour and therefore eliminating negative and challenging behaviours. Seeing the reactions of students receiving positive reinforcement for their good behaviour is excellent, and something that, that makes me happy, as I see the students stand proud with big smiles. It's obvious that all students want to be recognised and try their best in hoping they'll be the next to be rewarded. I'm sure by now we've all seen challenging behaviour, and another strategy which I find effective is a behaviour chart. This is a good idea for an individual student who may be a repeat offender uh, of bad behaviour. This requires the teacher to judge if the student has had a good day and place a sticker on a weekly chart. Communication with the parents is necessary and find 
that um, as it may have to be discussed, if the student receives all five stickers at the end of the week, they might be rewarded. This is something. Um, this is just something I've seen work effectively, and can also be an idea for students with special needs who require a bit more attention. And for example, an autistic student who may have a chart for a specific goal, like working with others. On to my third, um, eighth standard. I wish to address is on professional engagement. As already mentioned, I have been able to form warm, respectful relationships with students. This also goes for teachers and parents, as well as the wider school community. Looking at standard six, engage in professional learning, sub, point, uh, sub um, standard 6.2, engage in professional learning and improve, um, improve practice. Recently, I've been looking at job applications and find that applicants are asked to demonstrate an eagerness to learn, that of which I think I have, um, I have, and I think as a teacher, you are actively deciding to learn as your career as you move from primary school to high school to university and back into a school, and all of those places you learn, no matter what position you are in as a student or a teacher. This year, our placement has seen me become a member of the staff, invited to participate and, in, and attend professional development sessions. This year, my placement school introduced Big Write and VCOP, a session introducing literacy program that aims to raise the standards of writing across all students. I also attended further sessions on the implementation and moderation of, of assessment and of writing. Of, uh, of assessment of writing. And so I was able to see from the beginning the learning the teachers had to do in order to implement this class, uh, this effectively in the class. Prior to the first session, I had questions. I wanted to know the program. I wanted to know what the program was and how it would be effective for my students. In questioning this, I was investigating the relevance of the program. The presenters explained this straight away. They explained why it was good, how it can be used, the results we will see, and therefore also validating why we attend such sessions. I was able to learn strategies on how to effectively effectively implement the program, and. As a teacher, you want to be doing this the best way you can. And this program showed the teachers a new and effective way to deliver literacy to their students, and therefore giving reason to why we continue to engage in professional learning and improve practice. I hope you've enjoyed my presentation, at least as much as you can. Ultimately, I aim to be passionate about, um, ultimately, I am passionate about teaching and making a difference to, to students I teach. I believe it's an amazing career and so rewarding when you can see the learning take place. I can't wait to be in a classroom and get paid for what I love. Thank you.